Greetings and welcome, I'm Ash, and today I would like to give you a bit of a preview for Northgard, a Viking-themed real-time strategy game from the makers of Evoland. And if I had to do a needlessly specific comparison, I would also say that Northgard is like a simpler but more action-oriented take on the civilization formula. What I mean by this is that Northgard shares a similar focus on city building, resource management and open-ended playstyles that allow you to take your frontier settlement in whichever direction you might prefer. While Northgard is still unfinished and completely lacking in terms of single-player campaign, I did recently have a chance to give the beta a spin and see what all the fuss is about. So if guiding Viking settlers to prosperity sounds like something you might be interested in, allow me to share my thoughts on the gameplay shown so far. Much like Civilization, your beginnings in Northgard are incredibly humble. All you start with is a couple of workers and a town hall. Everything else you will need to gather and build from scratch within the confines of your own territory. However, since each region allows for only a certain amount of buildings, eventually you will have to expand your empire outward, which brings with it a whole set of new challenges. In order to conquer new territory, you first need to clear it of any hostiles, and then spend a constantly increasing chunk of food to actually colonize it. Spreading too quickly can and usually will be crippling to your economy, but it is also the only way to get more building space and access to rare resources. So deciding when and where to expand is quite the tricky question. But before you even think about extending your settlement, you first need to harvest resources in order to actually finance your expansion. Or else you're just going to be a proud owner of a random patch of forest. In other words, you'll first need to construct lumber mills, mines, farms and so forth. While all of this sounds simple on paper, in-game it is a bit of a different story. Not only are all of these buildings expensive to create early on, but they can only be built on certain types of terrain. You cannot create a mine with no minerals nearby, and you cannot hunt in a region with no game. Which instantly poses a couple of interesting questions for you, the player. For example, if you're low on food and there is no nearby fertile land or even animals to hunt, what are you going to do? Will you try to live off your meager supplies as best you can, or will you perhaps militarize your entire settlement and then try to politely borrow these resources from someone else? This sort of decision making is both the best and most annoying aspect of Northgard. On one hand, it forces you to think on the fly and develop new strategies once you encounter a shortage, but it does also mean that the lucky player gets a massive head start. If you have access to only one source of food near your main base, and remember how food is used to expand, you're going to find a lot more annoyance than enjoyment in trying to get your village off the ground. With your constantly growing worker force requiring a decent chunk of food to keep them going, it can be next to impossible to expand past your corner of the map, simply because you got dealt a bad hand. Things become even more brutal once winter finally arrives, bringing with it the chilling cold that pretty much paralyzes your whole industry. So if you haven't prepared enough food for all of your settlers, and also enough wood to keep them warm, you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble. The winter, along with random events such as earthquakes or rat infestations, is oddly enough one of my favorite parts of Northgard, simply because of how dynamic it makes the gameplay. While it's nice and sunny outside, you constantly have to balance between storing enough food for the colder months and expanding your economy. And then during the winter, you get to either enjoy the fruits of your labor or witness the first signs of revolution. It is a relatively simple concept, but it successfully manages to introduce a whole bunch of tough decisions into Northgard. The only issue I even have with winter is the previously mentioned lack of food sources on some maps. So hopefully the developers will quickly patch in some safeguards in order to prevent the quote-unquote unwinnable spawn from happening. Expanding into a new region costs a rather large amount of food, but while it might be the biggest number present on the screen, it is all of your tiny little villagers that consume the most of it. There is a catch, however. Villagers that aren't assigned a task will automatically gather berries for you, essentially helping ease the whole food problem by paying for themselves. 
And consequently, the moment you assign your workers a role, such as Lumberjack for example, they will begin producing that resource for you. But they will no longer be able to produce random food, which then puts further strain onto your economy. It is not often that a game gives you incentives to have idle workers, but Northgard also managed to do it in a fairly clever way. If you have enough food production, you can easily specialize pretty much all of your villagers. But in any other occasion, you're going to have to decide what is truly important to you. And it is this sort of gameplay style that I greatly appreciate. Besides food and lumber, your settlers can also dig up stone and iron from mines, increase happiness and spread culture through good old fashioned beer, operate trade routes with other players, analyze ancient monuments in order to speed up research, and naturally pick up a sword and start swinging it at the enemy. Each and every single one of these tasks is important, but deciding how many villagers you want to dedicate to each one is going to be up to you and you alone. If you're going for an elimination victory, you probably want as much gold and warriors as you can get, but if you're aiming for a lore based victory, you want as many lore masters as you can support without actually sabotaging your economy, and the list goes on. Whatever path you decide to take is purely up to you. I've managed to secure a win through each of the five main victory conditions, and I'm glad to say they're all mostly in balance with each other. The only outlier is the elimination victory, as it is much easier and much quicker to achieve than the rest of them. Simply gear your economy towards war, research all of the weapon upgrades as soon as possible, and then just send all of your units into the enemy's main base. This might not be as easy against real players, but the hardest AI proved to be no match against any type of military rush. That said, the AI in general isn't really the brightest of light bulbs. It will more often than not send its own troops to die one by one, and it is way too eager to expand, even if it has absolutely no means of defending its newfound territory. That said, all of my impressions come from an early beta build, so I can understand if the AI isn't done just yet. But I certainly hope it'll be getting improvements throughout the coming months, as I've never once felt threatened by it. The weak AI aside, one of the reasons each of the victory conditions feel achievable is the presence of multiple playable factions. Each of them plays similarly enough to not cause any confusion, but they all have special passives and research choices that can really give them a unique edge. For example, the Stag Clan is perfect for players that want to secure an economic advantage over their foes. They start with more resources than everyone else, so early expansions are simpler to maintain, and they also have a couple of research options entirely dedicated to trading, which makes getting rare materials quite easy even if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. These clan bonuses aren't so massive that they entirely dictate your playstyle, but they do a rather good job of giving each faction their own identity and a reason to exist. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which clan you pick, as long as you control your villagers well, you will find that success is never out of reach. And speaking of control, this is by far my biggest problem in Northgard, right behind the meek AI. If you're used to standard RTS controls, the type you might find in StarCraft 2 for example, you're probably going to lose your mind with Northgard. There are no control groups, so you have to constantly zoom around the map looking for villagers. There is no selection box, so you can't choose multiple villagers within the same region. And most importantly, trying to click on a single villager is needlessly difficult due to the tiny selection box. While all of these issues are fairly minor, when combined they produce far more annoyance than the sum of their parts. To illustrate what I mean, let's take the most basic element of any RTS, the combat. Even though Northgard only features three different warrior types, two of which are unique, the basic combat is unchanged from other RTS games. It all boils down to grabbing your units, sending them into enemy territory, and then watching them as they smack each other around until one side finally prevails. In order to boost your chances of victory, you can also micromanage your units so that the weakest ones pull out a battle for healing, while the healthy ones move forward to take the brunt of the damage. 
This is all fairly basic stuff, and the only reason I'm even mentioning it is because it's incredibly annoying to actually do in Northgard, due to all of the restrictions on your controls. You cannot easily send 3 out of 5 of your warriors into battle, you have to either send them all or send them one by one. As you can imagine, for an RTS game this really is not ideal. You also cannot put these units into control groups, so whenever you get attacked you have to mouse all over your kingdom in order to find the closest ones to send. And due to their tiny selection boxes, you are often going to lose them in the middle of combat due to easily avoidable damage, simply because you just couldn't select the proper unit in time. If these units were expendable like zerglings, I really wouldn't mind this too much, but maintaining an active army in Northgard is a pricey business. They devour tons of food, require a decent chunk of money to actually field, and if you ever lose them you have to wait until your town hall eventually spits out new villagers that you can then specialize into warriors. On the positive side, all of these issues are theoretically easy to fix, so I really do hope the developers will take a page from StarCraft 2 and implement some of its best features. And once the players have full and easy control over their units, improving the AI should be the next logical step in order to increase Northgard's complexity and long-term appeal. Even though it is by no means finished, I've had a great deal of fun with Northgard so far. Most RTS games these days shower you with resources and extremely cheap units, so to see a game that actually punishes carelessness is quite a refreshing thing indeed. Naturally, it is not without its flaws, but since this is only the beginning of the early access phase, I have high hopes for Northgard's future. With all of that said, I would still not recommend grabbing Northgard in its earliest state. It is not a bad game, but there is a definite lack of content once you realize how weak the AI truly is. So unless you're a massive fan of the RTS genre, or you wish to support the developers, I would recommend waiting at least a couple of months. At that point, Northgard will probably have some semblance of a single player campaign, more gameplay features and playable clans, and hopefully better controls as well. Once all of that gets added, I will gladly come back and give it another spin, but for now, I must admit, I've had my fill of Vikings. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please do let me know. And with that said, I hope you guys have a nice day, and I will see you soon. See ya!